The Gorilla Girls, 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 the Gorilla Girls. What's very good about our image is that when you look at our masks, you think of what we stand for. And we stand for the conscience of the art world. And we feel that there, there is underrepresentation of women and minorities. The Gorilla Girls, an anonymous feminist activist group who protested against gender inequality in the arts and in museum spaces. In June 1984, the Museum of Modern Art opened an exhibition where only 10% of the 169 artists chosen were women. The Guerrilla Girls protested outside MoMA, plastering walls, kiosks, and fences across Soho and the East Villages with bold and suggestive posters exposing the sexism within the art community. In the spring of 1985, the Guerrilla Girls were officially formed by seven women artists in Soho, New York. We were anonymous, we wanted to hide ourselves, so um, one of our early members was a really bad speller. And we were sitting at a meeting one day, and she spelled Gedea Gorilla, and it was like, wow, that's it. Yes, you heard that right. The Gorilla Girls came up with their gorilla mask idea when a member misspelled the word gorilla as gorilla, giving them the idea to wear gorilla masks in order to maintain their anonymity. The Gorilla Girls also took on the names of famous women artists, including Frida Kahlo, Libov Popova, and Gertrude Stein. One of the Gorilla Girls' big ideas is bringing art that's of the people to the people, and that's what street art does. use these bold, provocative posters to promote their messages, with their first poster titled, What Do These Artists Have in Common?, blatantly displaying the names and statistics to call out the sexist art galleries and the complicit male artists within the art world. They wanted to make people laugh, put people on the spot, use and spread valuable information in order to eventually change people's minds. The Guerrilla Girls operated under a collective and collaborative structure, operating under consensus. They operated independent of formal exhibitions and had no single leader. Joining the Guerrilla Girls was not easy. New members had to be nominated by current members in the group, and everyone had to agree. Only about 100 women were invited to join between 1985 and 2000. One of the challenges, or should I say downsides, of the Guerrilla Girls' radical movement was that they were very white. They were founded by seven white women and they lacked artists of color as members for several years. And when these artists of color did join, they didn't stay for long. Many left and formed their own separate organizations. At the end of the 1990s, member Alma Thomas was so frustrated with the lack of diversity and lack of the racial focus of the Gorilla Girls that she began to educate members by bringing bell hooks to meetings. Their lack of structure was ultimately their downfall. With no administrative process, whoever could shout the loudest ruled. Subcommittees developed ideas, presented them to the larger group, but they were often denied. There were no process to rotate jobs. Frida Kahlo and Kathy Kolowitz refused to share their power, dominating and controlling the group's production and presentation. They effectively fired every other member of the group and trademarked the name Gorilla Girls for the next 15 years. On March 1st, 2000, it was the last official meeting of the original Gorilla Girls. Frida Kahlo and Kathy Kolwitz are still running the Gorilla Girls today, and they are even doing things in 2020. We are outsiders. We will always point at what's happening at institutions and critique that. 
a lot of people ask us, you know, like, oh, you're criticizing the museums, but then we can see your work at institutions. And actually, it makes total sense to us because we love to criticize an institution right on its own walls. That's really fun. Despite their critiques of art museums and spaces, the Guerrilla Girls have now moved into these traditional spaces to produce art exhibitions, and their goal is to critique the institution from inside its walls. However, this makes the Guerrilla Girls somewhat less radical, because showing work in an art museum is inherently not radical. It has been done for thousands of years by many people, and although it is a good way to bring about change, it is not as radical as the original group's methods were. The Guerrilla Girls were ultimately a bold and radical feminist group that brought major attention to the patriarchy of the art world. However, their lack of racial focus and their use of inherently white feminism shoved artists of color out of the picture. Their lack of structure ultimately caused the original group's downfall. Now, the group today functions as a less radical movement, showing work in museums. Thank you so much for watching.